Welcome back. Now in this section of the show, we are focusing on the big elections, phase three of Lok Sabha elections, which is of course scheduled tomorrow. But ahead of that, we are talking to some important newsmakers who will be talking about the fact that after phase three elections, we are actually through the halfway mark. Where do we stand as far as this elections is concerned? And joining us now is Rajiv Chandrasekhar, MOS for IT and Skill Development, who is also back from his campaign in one of the most high-profile seats of Kerala, Tiruvannanthapuram. Thank you, Mr. Chandrasekhar, so much for your time to join us on the broadcast. Uh, so, my first question Thank to you. you. Kerala and Tamil Nadu are done with the elections on, on their states. 14 seats of Karnataka will be polling tomorrow. Now, while it was largely about the state government's guarantees versus uh, PM Modi's welfare in the second phase, the Prajwal Ravana case dominated the discourse this time around in Karnataka. How much do you think that will impact the state's polling this time? No, I, I think it is a lot more than just the failed Congress guarantees. I think, uh, you know, the viewers all around the country and uh, indeed people in Karnataka have seen signs of cash being hauled out of uh, Congress corporators' homes. And so there is a there is a general uh, awareness and narrative that the Congress has managed to convert Karnataka into an ATM. And there is an uh, issue of corruption and there is an issue of um, uh, their failed guarantees as well. So... I think that is uh, pretty clear. I think the the Ravana, Prajwal Ravana issue is uh, is consistent with the what the Congress has done throughout these 2024 elections, which is <coughs> try and distract away from the fact that they have no ideas for uh, the future of India. They have no idea to improve the lives of people, and they either selectively uh, tell lies uh, or half truths or leak out these types of uh, information to try and distract people mm. from what the core issue in these elections are, which is the future of India, the future of Karnataka. Right. Uh, the, the Home Minister of India, Amit Shah Ji, has a very beautifully mm. summarized this point as the Congress has more to answer. DK Shivkumar and Sidramaya have more to answer about right. the Ravana video tapes because they sat on that evidence mm. of women being exploited and women being harmed for several months when they had it and why did they not act on it. Right. So I think there are several uncomfortable questions that will arise out of this. Right. And many tough questions will have to be answered by the Chief Minister and the Home Minister of the State of Karnataka on why they sat on this evidence right. when there was clearly a crime being committed against women. Right. Mr. Chandrasekhar, one of the most uh, raging issues this time was also this matter of a doctored video of the Home Minister. At least five people from the Congress have been arrested. Several others have been sent notices. Now, the opposition has been saying that this is selective action. You know, is the administration also trying to send out a message against the spread of misleading information? No, there is, uh, there is nothing selective about this at all, Vasudha. Uh, as I said to you, from day one till today, and I suspect till the end of these elections, the Congress's campaign has been about anything but the future of India on development, on progress. They have resorted to lies. They have resorted to fake information. And most importantly, they have trespassed into blatant criminality by using these deep fakes and these altered videos. Please understand under the criminal law, under Section 505, 465, 469, forgery is a punishable crime up to three to seven years of rigorous imprisonment under the law. Hmm. And uh, by faking videos uh, and just because it is an election uh, does not give anybody a free pass or an amnesty from the consequences of law. Right. So there is certainly if the Congress and by the way, this is not the only instance with which the Congress has done these morphed videos or forged uh, images. Hmm. There are uh, instances in Kerala where they have done it, uh, targeting me, for example. Hmm. And these are all crimes. There is a uh, there is nothing uh, uh, discretionary about this at all. Right. And if there is any case right. of any fake videos being done by the BJP, the same consequences will apply to whoever is doing it. Absolutely. But we have not done it. It is the Congress that is doing it. And therefore, the consequences under the law right. are reaching out uh, uh, to their doorsteps. Right. Mr. Chandrasekhar, coming back to the elections, largely the polling in the first two phases went down by at least 4%. Uh, if we compare it to the previous time. Now, do you think that the third phase has the potential to reverse that? No, look, uh, I'm not a, a de I have not analyzed it and I certainly don't understand why the, the uh, turnout has been different in different states. There are some cases where uh, turnout has been low. For example, in Kerala, there are certain communities that have not come out in large numbers uh, as they had in 2019. In 2019, there was this 
fake narrative that uh, somehow Rahul Gandhi was going to become the Prime Minister. Only he believed it and some other people who were misled into believing it, they came out in large numbers. They have realized that uh, this time around it is uh, Narendra Modi ji's third term. And so therefore there may be many reasons in many states. I certainly don't have any inside insight into it, right. excepting to hope that uh, I think people see this election as an important election. It is certainly, <clears throat> regardless of the outcome or whether uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji gets another very, very decisive mandate, more right. than even the 2019 mandate or not, I think I, I, I hope that more and more people come out, not because of the end result itself, but because it is their duty and be because it is a once in a five years uh, obligation for all of them to participate in the celebration of democracy. Right. So certainly I hope that the third phase will be a higher turnout phase and uh, the, as will be the fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chandrasekhar, for joining us on NDTV and talking about the changing nature of uh, election wars and, of course, doctored videos and expectations from the elections. Uh, moving on, 93 constituencies across 11 states, Tanima, will vote tomorrow in the phase three of the Lok, Lok Sabha elections of 2024. In the last few days, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the BJP not just stepped up their attack on the Congress and the India bloc allies, on dynasty politics, but also on reservation, alleging that the Congress party wants to distribute the reservation pie and also wealth of the poor to the Muslims of the country. Right. Prime Minister Modi also held a grand roadshow in Ayodhya after doing puja at the newly consecrated Ram Temple that the BJP is proudly showcased as one of its biggest achievements. The opposition leaders have, of course, hit back in equal measure with Congress MP Rahul Gandhi claiming that the BJP will not cross 150 seats. Of course, and t tomorrow is important because by Tuesday evening, over 280 constituencies would have voted, meaning that more than half of the total seats in the Lok Sabha would have been decided. The stakes, Tanima, are significantly high for the BJP here. If you look at numbers, in 2019, the BJP won 75 of the 93 seats that will go to polls on Tuesday, while the India bloc parties won just about 11. Four seats went to the Shiv Sena, which was undivided then. Um, two were won by independents and one was uh, won by Badruddin Ajmal's uh, AIUDF. Now, polling would also end in some states, Gujarat, Chhattisgarh, Karnataka tomorrow, and polling has has already ended in Rajasthan, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Right, and the debate around reservations voter turnout dipping by at least 4% across and even to 11% in places such as Mathura and the Prajwal Ravanna factor, sitting MP and candidate sex tapes, BJP winning unopposed in Surat and Indore. All of that is going to be in the mix for Tuesday's elections. Of course, several big faces also in the running. Amit Shah, uh, Jyotiraditya Sindhya, Dimple Yadav and NCP Supriya Sil Sule, among many others who are in the fray. But uh, at this point, we are also joined by our reporters, as I promised, uh, Anurag Dwari from Bhopal, Pratibha from Bengaluru, Radhika from Sabarmati, Saurabh Gupta from Malda in Bengal and Ratnadeep from Guwahati. Uh, uh, thank all our reporters for joining us on the uh, on the <laughs> broadcast today where we are focusing on phase three. Starting with Saurabh who is reporting from Malda. Saurabh, this is one of the sensitive border towns of Bengal. We have seen how, you know, the war of words this time around in Bengal has been extremely fierce between the TMC <laughs> and the BJP. Uh, this is, of course, known as a TMC stronghold, but we have seen the Prime Minister as well as several senior leaders of the BJP making several visits, including to Malda, holding rallies there. So what sense are you picking up from the ground? Well, one thing that I've heard here in Malda is that the crowds at the Prime Minister's rally was something that everybody seemed to be uh, talking about. There was a huge crowd at the Prime Minister's rally and that's an indicator that the BJP has increased its support in several parts of Bengal. But uh, this town and Malda specifically has been a stronghold of the Congress party. The Congress party amongst the two seats that it still holds in West Bengal, one of them is Malda South. I am in the Malda South seat where there is a contest between uh, Shanawaz Ali Rehan of the TMC, a young scholar, PhD scholar at Oxford, who's yet to submit his thesis but has taken up the election uh, duty and as a candidate. <clears throat> then you also have Shirupa Mitra Chaudhary, who is known as Nirbhaya Didi, who has been conducting a very colourful campaign. And you also have on the other side, Ghani Khan family member and uh, ABA Ghani Khan Chaudhary's nephew, Isha Khan Chaudhary, on, uh, on, on, on behalf of the Congress. 
So, uh, Murshidabad also is going to polls. Jongipur, former president Pranam Mukherjee's parliamentary seat for two terms is also going to polls. Also, you have uh, Malda North where the BJP already has uh, an MP, Kogan Murbu. Uh, he's also, that seat is also going to polls. So, four po uh, seats going to polls, all sensitive seats, lots of central forces deployed. And I can say this with a word of caution, but if these elections and this phase turns out to be peaceful and there is no incident of violence, then one can safely assume that Bengal has had a relatively more in, uh, less incident-free uh, you know, uh, election and less violent election if tomorrow's election passes off without incidents of violence. So yes, it's a sensitive town, it's a Congress stronghold, Trinamool trying to make inroads, BJP eyeing an opportunity as the Congress and the TMC also aim for votes. So it's a very interesting contest in this phase of the elections. Right. Thank you, Saurabh, for joining us with those details. Uh, Anurag, in 2019, Bhopal witnessed a very feisty contest between Sadhya, Sadhvi Pragya Thakur of the BJP and Digvijay Singh of the Congress Party. Pragya Thakur, of course, uh, won by over 3 lakh votes, but she was dropped this time. This time, the fight is between newcomers, which is former Mayor Alok Sharma and, of course, Arun Srivastav. How are the people of Madhya Pradesh looking at this? And, of course, a key player tomorrow is Vidisha's uh, Shivraj Chauhan. How, how is he looking at this election? Because that is also important for, for him. Yes, because I was also amazed by, uh, I mean, uh, his name was not mentioned in your intro. But anyways, I'm just thankful to Saurabh because we are in a much peaceful state, except from Gwalior and Chambal, which is infamous for high temperatures and low voter turnout. So that's a matter of concern for the election commission. But as you rightly pointed out, Bhopal, I mean, uh, Alok Sharma of the BJP, former mayor of uh, Bhopal, is contesting on a BJP's ticket. And uh, in front of him is Arun Srivastav of the Congress, but apart from, uh, you know, Bhopal's seat, uh, interesting battle between one Raja, one Maharaja, Raja obviously, uh, Shivra, uh, I mean, Digvijay Singh, who is contesting from Rajgarh and Maharaja of Sindhya, is contesting from Guna Shivpuri, two ex-chief ministers, including Shivraj Singh Chauhan and Digvijay Singh once again, Shivraj Singh Chauhan from Vidisha. So, interesting battle, but if you see, uh, as I said, uh, that the Gwalior Chambal region is infamous for higher temperatures and low, low voter turnouts and that's the region basically why BJP is <coughs> more concerned about because during the last assembly elections, you know, the contest was almost equal between the Congress and the BJP. But if you come to the central Madhya Pradesh, which consists of Bhopal, Baitul, Rajgarh and, uh, you know, uh, Vidisha, BJP is much more comfortable. Uh, if you talk about Bund uh, uh, Bundelkhand region, only uh, Sagar will go, uh, will go to polls tomorrow. And the only lone sitting MLA of the Congress from Bina Ganj, she has joined uh, the BJP. So uh, uh, e even in Bundelkhand region, they are, uh, you know, quite comfortable. But only Gwalior and Chambal is a matter of concern for the, uh, for the BJP because uh, in Morena, uh, the uh, scoreline in the recently held assembly elections was 5-3. <coughs> so let's see what happens tomorrow, but uh, uh, the election commission as well as all the political parties are expecting now a, a, a higher voter turnout, uh, especially in this third phase uh, in Madhya Pradesh. That's right. Uh, Anurag, uh, stay with us. I'm also joined by my colleague Radhika, who's currently in Ahmedabad. Radhika, we've seen, uh, of course, Gujarat, several seats going into polls now. Uh, in fact, all the seats, except for the fact that Surat is probably already a decided factor uh, this time around. But uh, in, in terms of the fact that this is BJP's bastion, is there any surprise in store in terms of the mood on the ground there? What do you think? Certainly, state set for polls in Gujarat and as you rightly pointed out, 25 seats going to polls. One, of course, has already been won by BJP. In fact, one seat has gone to BJP's kitty simply because there was no candidate that was opposing that particular seat. Several withdrawing and one candidate whose nomination was in fact rejected. So that's Surat, which has already been won by the BJP even before the election has started in Gujarat. 25 seats going to polls. Uh, yes, and as you rightly pointed out, this is Prime Minister Modi's home turf. This is uh, Home Minister Amit Shah's uh, 
home turf. This is, of course, BJP turf. Uh, one can call Gujarat the epicenter, one of the epicenters of Indian politics. Um, this is the home state of Prime Minister of the country as well as Home Minister of the country. Both of them will be uh, casting their votes tomorrow. Of course, Amit Shah is the key candidate uh, this time around. Of course, uh, he will be contesting from a constituency uh, which is uh, Gandhinagar. And uh, of course, there's Mansuk Manvi also, who's also a key contest. And as far as BJP is concerned, uh, many would say this is a cakewalk for BJP. They were undefeated in the last two elections, be 2014 or 2019. 26 out of 26 won by BJP. Not a single seat lost. Now, at this time, a political observer say, you know, it's not the who is winning or who is losing that has to be spoken about, but by what margin? Because many a times Prime Minister Modi, Amit Shah, uh, you know, continuously talking about a five lakh margin by which every constituency will be won. That remains to be seen. Now, as far as the opposition is concerned, which is the Congress party, uh, by and large, it is allied with Amadmi party. Congress will be contesting 24 seats. Amadmi party will be contesting two seats. So they have come together. So there could be some benefit for Congress. Uh, you know, the the Division of votes may not happen the, the way it happened uh, during assembly elections and also sort of riding on or yeah. relying on the antique incumbency factor that may set in, voter fatigue that may set in and also a Kshatriya, uh, uh, you know, anger against the BJP. There were protests right. by Kshatriya community uh, because a, a BJP leader had in fact spoken against them. So that may work in favour. Uh, but, uh, you know, as far as Gujarat is concerned, that has always been BJP bastion. Tomorrow, Prime Minister Modi to vote at uh, 7.30 a.m. in Ranip and Amit Shah to vote about at about 9.00. 15 a.m. 25 seats to go to polls as far as uh, the state of Gujarat is concerned. So interesting battle there 26 25 seats of uh, Gujarat to vote tomorrow and like Radhika says it is about the scale of victory but three ministers going to also be in the fray tomorrow Amit Shah who's the home minister Pushottam Rupala the fisheries minister and of course the health minister Mansukh Bhai Mandavia also the prime minister is going to vote from Gujarat which is all the more interesting Pratibha Karnataka is the most important state for the BJP when it comes to the south of India last time it won 25 of the 28 seats but with the voter turnout dropping in urban areas, at least in the second phase, are the political parties concerned? And how much is the Prajwal Revanna sex case dominating the campaign? What are political parties thinking about tomorrow's polling? Well, to answer the first part of your question, the voter turnout, uh, as far as Karnataka is concerned, we are talking of the remaining 14 constituencies that lie in the North Karnataka belt. And uh, that is the rural section. And interestingly, the rural sections, uh, the voter turnout there is much more when compared to the urban areas there. So not much of a problem there for uh, the different parties uh, as far as uh, the North Karnataka belt is concerned. But uh, when it comes to the face-off, it's mainly between the BJP as well as the Congress. So how much of a factor will uh, uh, the entire controversy revolving around the first family of the JDS would play definitely remains to be seen because the BJP has uh, distanced itself from uh, the entire scandal. Senior leaders of the JDS as well are talking about not to bring the BJP as well as Prime Minister Modi into the picture as far as this case is concerned. However, it is definitely a make or break election for the Congress because we are talking about the Congress trying to replicate what it really did with the Assembly election here as far as the Lok Sabha election is concerned. While the poll plank during the previous phase of the election was centered around Modi guarantees versus the Congress guarantees. This time, the poll right. plank used Pratima, by the Congress is definitely the Prajwal Revana issue that you have mentioned. Right. I'm very short of time. Sorry to interrupt you there. But let me quickly go across to my colleague Ratnadeep who's standing by in uh, Guwahati. Ratnadeep, uh, what impact will delimitation have on constituencies such as Dubri and Barbeta, which are also voting uh, tomorrow? Uh, take us through the impact of that as far as uh, Assam is concerned. That's right. In fact, uh, the third phase of polls will be uh, the wrap of elections for Lok Sabha in Northeast. All the 14 seats uh, by tomorrow evening Sorry. in Assam Sorry. and all the 25 seats in uh, uh, Northeast would have been completed. And for the BJP, these 25 seats are very important because the BJP and its allies wants to maximize the number of seats this time in uh, Lok Sabha. Remember, last time they had won 18 out of this 25. Now, talking about these four seats going to polls, uh, uh, th there will be a big test for the BJP allies in Assam, the AGP and the UPPL, particularly in seats like Barpeta, which 
which has seen a shift in uh, demographic pa pattern because of the delimitation. In fact, now the number of Hindu voters there is more and therefore most of the political parties have uh, uh, filled in Hindu candidates. In fact, the uh, NDA candidate is the longest serving MLA in Assam Assembly, Fani Bhushan Chaudhary. This time he's taking a plunge in the, uh, for the Lok Sabha elections. But also you right, have Dhubri, which is, uh, which is, you know, you have 85% uh, minority votes and there uh, it will be a test for Maulana Badruddin Ajman who is holding right. that seat since 2009. Right. But uh, this time he faces a tough fight from right. Congress and not to forget the Guwahati seat where I there is a battle really between two women. Remember, there, Guwahati has always yes. uh, for the right. past couple of years elected a uh, women candidate. Really sorry to interrupt you there, Ratnadi, but I thank all my colleagues for joining us on the show. Anurag, Saurabh, Pratibha, Radhika, Ratnadeep there joining us to discuss about phase three elections tomorrow. And also joining us now on the show is uh, DMK MP Kani Mori and also the party's candidate from Tutukuri. Thank you so much, ma'am, for speaking to NDTV. You were among the big faces that were in the fray in the first phase of elections. More than two weeks are over. How do you see DMK's performance in the final outcome, particularly because voter turnout across the country has dipped? I definitely think that uh, DMK and uh, the India Alliance and Tamil Nadu will do very well and it will be a sweep again. And I think uh, the women... Uh, uh, you know, a percentage of the women voting more in this election is uh, also also very, you can see it as a very positive thing for the uh, DMK government. Uh, it is like, uh, you know, uh, it's time to recognize the work uh, the chief minister has done, especially when it comes to the, um, you know, uh, the bus rides without, uh, uh, women don't have to pay for their uh, bus rides and uh, the thousand rupees uh, scheme of uh, Kalangar Mahali Burimai Togai and the, especially the Pudumai Pen Dittam where if a girl from uh, an underprivileged family uh, when she steps into college and if she comes from a government school then every month uh, she's paid thousand rupees till she finishes uh, her uh, degree. So all these schemes are very poor, uh, pro-women uh, and uh, also uh, it is uh, a step in empowering them. So uh, I think uh, women are, uh, you know, uh, feeling uh, that the government is doing a lot for them and they uh, have come forward to vote uh, in this election in large numbers. And of course, uh, I think uh, the voter turnout is... Uh, low in many of the states I think uh, is also because of the unprecedented uh, heat waves uh, which we are uh, facing also. Ma'am, you know, the debate around reservations has taken center stage in this election discourse. The BJP saying that the Congress will bring in Muslim quotas and the opposition saying that the BJP will alter the reservation policy. As someone who comes from Tamil Nadu, from a state that has successfully implemented a policy of above 50% reservation, I know the case is still in court, but you have sur surpassed the ceiling that has been set by the Supreme Court. How do you see this debate around reservations? It was Tamil Nadu who actually brought in the, the our leaders were the ones who fought for the first uh, amendment to be changed and reservations to be brought in. Um, I uh, think it's just that uh, you know the BJP because it is quite desperate now that it's trying to you know create a, a fear among in the minds of people. And of course, it's their uh, divide and rule policy, which is at uh, work now, which uh, keeps saying that, you know, the Congress and the India Alliance is, uh, you know, going to take away rights from everybody and uh, give it away to the minorities. Um, the uh, reservation, I think it is about uh, the larger and uh, oppressed uh, Hindu majority. It is not... Uh, for the Muslims, which uh, reservations have been fought for. They, in Tamil Nadu, yes, there is a small percentage of reservation for the Muslims, but uh, uh, on a majority scale, it is for the um, uh, you know, backwards communities and the Dalits, uh, who are also Hindus, a majority of the Hindus. And uh, it is for them that uh, we fought for. So I think the BJP is completely confused about what reservation is.
And uh, I think till uh, we can do away with caste system and uh, the hierarchy in caste system is uh, done away with, I think uh, uh, we have to have a reservation to protect the people who are oppressed and who are kept out of uh, the larger society. Till society becomes inclusive, truly inclusive. Uh, and uh, there is social justice. I think uh, reservation has to continue. So that was DMK leader uh, Kani Moi joining us on NTV talking about elect possible election outcomes and of course uh, the debate around reservations. Important day tomorrow, 93 seats across 11, se 11 states to vote and it will also show us, Tonema, how enthused the country is about voting. Right, and with that it's a wrap from our side. On the other side, Vishnu and Maria coming up.